So today's video is actually really important. I'm about to introduce you guys to someone who is very special, someone who is fighting for a very good cause right now, and uh, someone who I've known for quite some time now. I've definitely gotten to see how passionate he is about this cause, and he asked me if he could use my platform to get a little bit more outreach, and I, I just said absolutely. So I want you guys to do me a huge favor. He's actually going to call me any second now. I'm going to just put him on the mic, let him talk to you guys, let him speak a little bit about where he's coming from. Just just give him the benefit of the doubt. Really listen to what he has to say. He can be a, a bit eccentric, a bit serious, but when you see what he's up against, I think you'll understand why he's as passionate as, as he is. And that's actually him right now. He's on the phone right now. Uh, again, just, just hear him out for me, guys. This is Tony the Snowman, reporting from the front lines of the war between the snow people, the humans, and that son of a bitch they call the sun. I hear that some of you are looking to join our cause, cross over from the human side to the snow person side. Well, if you're interested in doing that, you're going to have to learn about how us snow people roll out on the battlefields of the frontier, especially around the holiday season. So why don't you go ahead and start by taking a look at your current selection of pilot loadouts. I imagine as a filthy human, you've got them filled with G2s and cloaks. If you want to roll with the snow people, you're going to have to regain at least an ounce of self-respect and honor. Go ahead, remove your G2s and remove your cloaks. And while you're at it, remove any sort of self-doubt you had as a human. Because as snow people, we don't have any sort of self-doubt. We're true. We're cold. We're soft and fluffy. We're everything we wish you were. And if you want to become one of us, you'll listen to what I have to say. Let's start by kidding out that brand new snowman loadout. Now you make sure you don't start putting the in front of it. You're not the snowman. You're not the snow woman. There are many of us. You're not the only one. And don't start doing any of that shit where you take the W out of there. You're not advertising your snowplow company. All right. And that we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at just what we're going to be running within our typical snow person loadout. To start, a wall each and every time. You want to know why? No, it's not because I like shooting from behind a wall when I kill my enemies. It's because we're dealing with the son of a bitch they call the sun. Once again, let me remind you, the sun is a son of a bitch. He's one of our main enemies. The humans love him. They beg for him to come back year after year, and he almost always listens to them, despite the death of millions and millions of snow people each and every time. We sit in the gutters of some puddle until the next year rolls around while those humans and their filthy tans are out on the beach rocking their Gucci Gucci and their tummies because they didn't actually exercise over the winter and they never got to that New Year's resolution. Frankly, I'm sick of it. It's disgusting. And I spent three months as a puddle before a small girl rolled me back up into the snowman I am today. I ain't going through that again, and I don't want any of you to either. The AWOL gives us the UV protection we need to stay out in the sun just a little bit longer so we can take down those filthy humans, and hopefully, eventually, one day, take down that son of a bitch, the sun. Moving on, we've got our electric smoke grenades. The great thing about these, they're a blizzard in the back of your pocket. Pop it inside of enemy territory, watch the humans scramble around like they're standing in a flurry with three inches of visual clearance. Crack them in the side of the head with a snowball, on to the next one. Primary weapon, there's really one and only weapon you are to be running as a member of the snow people, and that is the softball. Or as I like to call it, the snowball delivery system. This baby ain't exactly packing the soft snowballs you used to throw with your buddy Johnny when you were five years old. No, it's packing the ice balls you used to throw at your buddy Johnny when you got really pissed with them when you were 13 years old. He went home to his mama, his mama called your mama, you were grounded for two weeks and you ain't talked to Johnny in 15 years. That's what this thing's going to be slinging. Nice, hard, ice packed snowballs. This is what we take the enemies out with. This is what we win this war with. Now when it comes to your secondary and your anti-titan weapons, there aren't really any guidelines or rules here. Whatever works best for you. You want to use human weapons? Go ahead. You want to use snow person weapons? Go ahead. As long as you're here to win the war, that's all I care about at that point. And make sure you're rocking white camo. Ain't no one ever heard of a snow person that ain't white because snow is white. It's science. It's mother nature. We don't fuck with that. All right? Now let's talk a little bit about our titans. We've only got one titan that has been cleared for use by the snow people, and that is the one they call Scorch. You see, Scorch recently migrated up north. He's hanging out with Santa Claus, working on all sorts of new magic shit. And his new thermite launcher actually fires at negative 10,000 degrees. It's so cold it's on fire. Don't ask me how it works. I don't know, I don't care. It's magic, it's fucking Santa Claus and Scorch. That's all you need to know. Get yourself a Scorch unit ASAP, and I'll see you on the frontier, soldier. It's time to take this one home for snow people everywhere. It's time that we claim what is rightfully ours and bring winter to this planet they call Earth once and for all. Wow, 
Uh, you know, he came on a bit stronger than I really expected him to. Again, like I said, guys, he's he's a real passionate dude. I hope you'll you'll see where he's coming from and consider taking up arms on the frontier, especially this holiday season, to to help out the snow people. I mean, they need us, man. They need humans on their side. You know, they're frankly they're just tired of the conditions they're forced to live in. I mean, how would you like to only be alive for you know three to four months out of the year? Not every snowman can live in the Swiss Alps. So I hope you'll see just what's going on here and uh you know you'll do what's right and if you decide that you want to take up arms i would love for you guys to send me and tony snowman some footage of you out on the frontier rocking and rolling your snow person loadout getting the job done you can share those clips with me over on twitter at tony mo gaming you got any short clips are you taking down the humans with your snowball launcher i'd love to see that stuff happening tony snowman's going to be coming over to my house this christmas actually and if him and i can sit down and just look through a bunch of awesome clips with this loadout you know showing that you're representing the snow people that would really bring a smile to his frosty little face so there's some other things i wanted to do considering this is supposed to be my christmas special and i figured we take a look back in time and talk a little bit about my early titanfall one memories now if you guys haven't already seen last year's christmas special where we did a bit of a uh, Santa-themed loadout. I'll have that linked down in the description as well as the pinned comment, as well as an annotation. It was a lot of fun. It was uh, it very scripted. I actually wrote like a little poem for it. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. It was super good. But for this year, we're just going to kind of chill out and spend some time talking about Titanfall 1. Really, I'd love to hear your memories about the original Titanfall, how you learned about the game the first time you saw it, the first time you played it. And for those of you guys who maybe made Titanfall 2 your very first Titanfall experience, We'll share your stories about that, you know? Did you did you ever see Titanfall 1? Did you play it, but you didn't own it? You didn't have an Xbox or a Windows platform? You know, just uh, share your, in general, how I got into Titanfall stories. And if it happens to be OG Titanfall, great. If it's Titanfall 2, that's great too. For me, it goes back to the original announcement for Titanfall. I've always been someone who sort of followed you know, game development, the news of everything closely. I always know when this game's coming out and that game's coming out. I'm a little less like that these days, but I think it's actually easier to follow that stuff nowadays. So I am still really on that same level I once was. But when I was younger, especially like Xbox 360 era, I mean, there was stuff on the internet, but like, I don't know, the platforms aren't the way they are now. They weren't the way they are now. So a lot of it was through magazines still, uh, you know, there was some internet stuff, but a lot of it was still like magazines were getting exclusive. So I had OXM, EGM was still at the time, 1UP was still at the time, and I would learn a lot of stuff through that. But I would say the original Titanfall was around the era where magazines were still prevalent, but a lot of stuff was definitely shifting more to the internet and like YouTubers and individuals. So Titanfall 1, if I remember correctly, was actually initially revealed by Game Informer though, both, both on their website as well as as a cover issue on the Game Informer magazine. I actually have that issue and I have a blow up of a poster, a full size poster from GameStop that I got because Game Informer and GameStop, I don't know if they still do, but they used to do their thing for the power up card. And I actually ended up using power up card points when I still was uh, had points from when I worked there to get this really awesome poster. I need to get it framed at some point and show it to you guys because it's fantastic. But that was sort of like, I feel like the one to th maybe three week period where Respawn like revealed itself as a studio and then like a month later, they were like, oh, we're working on a first person shooter. And then three days later, it was like, boom, here's Titanfall. And, it, you know, it was very much a game that looked like it had the Call of Duty DNA, but everything else about it was like just flip turned straight upside down. You know, mechs and wall running. It was like, what, what is this madness, man? It looked glorious. And the one thing that always struck me about the OG Titanfall when I first saw it was the aesthetic. It was very industrial. And I'll be honest, as much as I like the more polished approach that they took with Titanfall 2, I miss that industrial aesthetic. And I think that that would look incredible with the updates they did to the Source engine. You know, I think to see what Titanfall 1 would look like running in the current Titanfall 2 tech, that's something I would love to see. And I'm actually really curious to see what direction they take Titanfall 3. If there's one thing about Respawn that I love, at least from my experience with Titanfall 1 and now Titanfall 2, it's that they they seem a lot like uh, like CD, Pro CD Project or CD Project. Uh, in that 
they're willing to make really big jumps across one game to the next. They're not like, oh, well, it's it's the second game, so it doesn't have to be that different. <laughs> Just change the color of the UI and add one gun. No, they're like, let's overhaul it. Let's, you know, go with a different visual approach to things. Let's change the way Titans work. I'm not going to say I agree and love all of the changes they made, but I like that they made the changes in the first place, that they don't feel bogged down by what's popular in the mainstream market of AAA, and they just make what feels like what they want to make. I've always loved that about them. So you look at the leaps and bounds they made from Titanfall 1 to Titanfall 2 in polish and presentation. I hope they're able to do the same leap when they go from Titanfall 2 to Titanfall 3, and hopefully they take just as many risks. I'd rather have Titanfall 3 be a game that has a bunch of cool ideas with some ideas that don't work than have it be a game that plays it safe just so it tries to sell a little bit more than it did. You know, as long as they can make money and turn a profit at the end of the day, I think they're a team that wants to experiment and that wants to have fun. And that was something that felt really apparent when you played the first Titanfall. It felt like a game that was doing a lot of the things they had done in Call of Duty, but also taking a lot of risks. And it still, to me, is the best example of how to handle mechs in a first-person shooter. You know, to not make them feel like the cumbersome vehicle you get in. You know, the first time you got in a mech in Titanfall 1, it was like, this is basically an extension of my pilot. I can't wall run, but it doesn't matter because I'm big, I'm badass, and I'm going to stomp on people's faces. It was just a glorious feeling. And uh, the first time I actually saw Titanfall 1 being played by someone else, it was a moment of extreme jealousy because they were doing the closed alpha technical test, much like they did with Titanfall 2, but it was very hard to get into. I never ended up getting into it, but Maximilian Dude, he's a YouTuber, you may have heard of him, he does fighting game stuff, he was actually stoked about the game. Somebody who grew up playing Modern Warfare, he was excited about it, he got in and was able to post footage on his YouTube channel, and I very distinctly remember watching him play on Angel City with the long bow, and I was like, that's the first thing I need to unlock and do when I get Titanfall 1. And uh, it actually was, I, like, I chased it down for the longbow, didn't like it very much, ended up liking the Kraber a lot more, and uh, ended up becoming even more obsessed with running the R2 with like a suppressor, and at that time I think I loved the R97 and Old Titanfall was my jam, but man, what a beautiful game it was, you know? Like to go back and play the original Titanfall for the first time without knowing of its existence or Titanfall 2's existence, so, you know, that's one of those games, much like The Witcher 3, much like Skyrim and now Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild, so many other games, Gear, original Gears of War, Halo 2. If I could go back in time and play those games for the first time again, I would totally do it. And that's how I feel about the original Titanfall. It was just the first time you linked together that really long string of wall runs at the start of a map and, you know, made your way all the way to the other side in just like a couple seconds because of wall running it was just glorious i didn't even need slide hopping i didn't need bunny hopping you know it was just the ability to do that in a game in a first person shooter you know in the competitive style environment with other players was just not something that you really ever got to do before not to that level of polish and that level of clarity where you just always felt like you were doing exactly what you wanted to do and that still today is my favorite thing about titanfall again take away the slide hopping i will be more than happy to you know, do my crazy little wall hangs and flanks and let the guy run underneath me and then snap his neck from behind. All of my favorite moments in Titanfall 2 exist because of the wall run mechanic, because of the little parkour mechanics. I might get to those moments faster because of the slide hopping mechanic, but it's those moments that I really cherish and that I really love so much. Looking back at the original Titanfall and even Titanfall 2 now. And when Titanfall 1 came out, I actually ended up playing it with like a full group of friends. We had like a full squad all the time. We pub stomped hard. And honestly, that's probably why the game got so old for me so quick. I think we only played the first DLC. And at that point, the player base was pretty fragmented because the season passes were paid. You had to pay for the DLC. They eventually would make them free, but it was like too little too late at that point. And, uh, you know, we just stomped on everybody's face. It was like when you, when you had a group. It's the same thing with Titanfall 2, though. If you play in a group... You're just going to steamroll everybody, right? It's just the nature of that game. Like, unless Respawn makes drastic changes to how team play works in Titanfall 3, that will likely be the case with team with uh, Titanfall 3. And for us, that kind of led to the game getting boring. You know, there was no competition. We were never, like, having people go up against us, at least on Xbox. I put a little bit on PC. It was a little bit more competitive there. But most of my playtime with my friends was on Xbox. And it was just like, you know, uh, we just slowly kind of wore ourselves out of the game. I played a lot, though. In the first, like, six months, I played a lot. I probably have more hours in Titanfall 1 than I do in Titanfall 2, even though I technically played Titanfall 2 for a longer period of time, just because of how saturated 
my experience was with Titanfall 1. So, I'm definitely excited for the future of Titanfall. I always will be. And I hope that Respawn, once again, gets to just take risks and do fun stuff. That, to me, is more important than anything. In a time and day when so many developers are playing it safe to get that money in the pocket of their publishers to progress forward, I love devs that just do big, fun, and daring things. And I love hearing about the stories after they manage to be successful with those things. So all I really have to say to Respawn is to just keep being rebellious and keep being badass and keep making the games you guys love to play. And I will be here to play them each and every step of the way, as I'm sure many other members of the community watching this video right now will agree and attest and join me in doing. So I definitely have to say, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everyone at Respawn. Josh, any of you guys are watching this, send my love, send my, uh, send my merry merriness to everybody over at Respawn and enjoy your holiday, guys. Of course, the same goes for the rest of you fine folks. Thank you so much for joining me today for my Titanfall 2 Christmas special. If you haven't watched last year's Christmas special, it's so much fun. That's why I'm harping on you to go watch it. Please go do it. Feel free to share your OG Titanfall and first ever Titanfall memories right down in the comment section below. I will see you guys back here right on the channel after Christmas. If you're celebrating, I hope you have a fantastic holiday. If you already have celebrated, if you're currently celebrating, or if you will be celebrating anything in the coming weeks and months, I hope you have a fantastic one. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember to play smart. Remember to play to challenge yourself. But most importantly, remember to play for fun. Thank you.